Hey guys, it's Robin R. Silent Crafts and welcome to my studio. Today's tutorial is going to be about the super simple zippered coin pouch, coin purse, however you want to look at it. Today's tutorial is part of the series where I'm taking some of my older, longer videos and condensing them into a shorter, quicker version for those people who want to get in, get the tutorial, and get out, and they're not looking for the extra chit chat. For those of you that are looking for all the tips and tricks and the extra chatter, I'll put a link down below in the description box to the original video and to the other videos in the zipper playlist if you want to see how to make different zipper pouches. There's three really good things about these little pouches. One, it doesn't take much for supplies, just a little bit of fabric, some interfacing and a zipper. Two, they're super quick to make. It only takes a few minutes to go ahead and whip one out. And three, I just love having a cute little coin pouch or notions pouch with some fun fabric. Now for mine, I have my two outer fabrics and they measure four and a half inches this way and five and a half inches in width. My zipper happens to be eight inches long. You just wanna have a nylon zipper that is longer than the size of your pouch that you're starting with, the fabrics that you cut. It just makes it a lot easier to sew it. And with the nylon one, you can just go ahead and snip it with your scissors afterwards. And it's really super quick. I also have two pieces of interfacing that are the same size as my fabrics. I like to use a medium weight interfacing, but you can use whatever you happen to have on hand. And you're also gonna need two lining pieces that are again, cut the same size. So everything is the same size. You just want your zipper to be a little bit larger. So I've gone ahead and I've fused my interfacing to both of my outer pieces. And then I just have my regular lining. If you have directional fabric, you wanna make sure it is in the proper direction so that you're looking at top to bottom. I'm going to take my zipper and I'm going to consider the coils here with the zipper pull, the right side. So I want to take this and I want to put it right sides together with my outer fabric. The zipper pull is going to be on the left. So I will consider this the front of my pouch. So if you just use a nice fabric on the front, maybe you're just going to use a blue fabric on the back. So you want to have your front of your pouch to be your first piece. I'm going to line the top of my zipper tape here with the top of my pouch. Then I take my lining. Now this lining, as you can see, is just a plain piece of blue fabric. But if you had it to where it was printed on one side and plain on the other, you want to put the right sides down. So the right side of my lining with the right side of the outside of my pouch. And then I'm going to line it up on the sides here. You can use pins, of course, if you prefer. The next step is to take it to your sewing machine, use your zipper foot, and put your stitching right down through here. You're gonna see a variety of pouches today that I've made for all the different steps. So this is what it looks like after you stitch it together. Then I bring both sides over. I give it a nice, good press. Then I wanna put the other side on. I have my outside fabric facing up. And again, if you're looking at any type of a directional fabric, depending on which way you want things to face, you're going to keep the top at the top. I want to put them right side together. And this top edge here, I'm going to line up with the top edge of my zipper tape. Clipper pin it in place. Then I'm going to flip it over and I want my lining sides to be right sides together. Again, I'm going to line it up with the top of the tape, not with the actual lining that you see that's sewn down to the zipper. Take it back to the sewing machine and using your zipper foot still, stitch all the way down to there. You can back stitch at the beginning or end if you'd like, but when we stitch all the way around, we're going to cover up those seams. There you go, all stitched. Again, take it all to the opposite side. Give it a nice pressing. On the back side, I will go ahead and hit it complete with my iron. Keep that lining pieces on the side. And when I do the front, I like to run the tip of my iron just along that top edge. I've seen many people put their iron right on top of the zipper. My iron is actually not hot, so don't worry about my mat. But I like to just avoid that. I don't want to take any chances of causing anything to get a little warpy or anything like that. 
You can put clips on both sides to keep your lining and everything lined up nicely, but I take it to the sewing machine and still using my zipper foot about an eighth or a quarter of an inch away, I will top stitch along here. Not everyone does this step, it's totally up to you, but I like that it will keep the lining in place so that as you're using zipper pouch, your lining won't creep up and come through and get hooked into the zipper. There you go. Looks like that, everything stays nice in place. One of the most important things at this point is to take your zipper and move it just a little bit past the center so that it opens up. Then we match up our outer fabrics and our lining fabrics so that it looks like this. I put the zipper so that the extra bit of it goes to the lining. You can put clips all the way around. I like to line up these two pieces here. That helps everything line up in these sections right here on your zipper. I do clip or pin on both sides of the zipper. I like to do the lining also just to keep it from flopping around and getting in my way. When we stitch this, we wanna leave an opening at the bottom of our lining to turn our pouch about two inches. Back tack, stitch all the way around and then back stitch there so you have that opening there. You can put a couple pins in or mark it with a little heat release marker. If you'd like, you can back stitch on the zipper as you're going over it. This is what it looks like afterwards. See how we left that little bit of opening, just enough so we can turn it. There's no zipper tab on either side because I remembered to put the zipper to the center. If you forget, you can unpick some of it here you use a hemostat or try to get your fingers in there and open up the zipper and then go ahead and sew it back closed. Now I used a 3 h inch seam allowance. I did a 2.0 stitch length. You can use your quarter inch seam allowance if you'd like. I like to have it a little bit wider and that way I can go through afterwards and trim it down if I'd like. I like to trim my corners just to ease some of that bulk out. Then you can trim a little bit along here. I find it easier to stitch a wider seam allowance than it is to try to catch everything really well doing a quarter inch. Since we use the nylon zippers, we're able to cut right through. I don't trim down at the bottom because I wanna leave that extra bit of length for when I close up that hole. If you're unable to put your fingers in there, you can go ahead and use hemostats, but I can usually just put a finger or two in there, push through, pull it through gently. Since we did back stitching on either side of the hole, it's gonna stop it from those stitches tearing. Such a small little pouch and just a little bit of interfacing, it's not difficult to pull all the way through. You can use a crochet hook or anything that's kind of dull but has a little bit of a point to the edge to pop out your corners. If you're using something like scissors, you wanna be careful that you don't poke right through and create a hole in the bottom of your pouch. They also make turning tools. This one happens to be a flamingo. These are really great to get nice points. I don't worry about these here. I pop them up just a little bit just to make it easier for me to stitch there, but we're going to be tucking this back to the inside, so I don't need to have perfectly sharp corners here since they're going to be tucked in. Take this over and give it a nice little press. Put some pins in it or clips if you want and using a, your 2.0 stitch length and about an eighth of an inch seam allowance, you just wanna start, start just a little bit before where your opening is, back stitch, come all the way past just a little bit, back stitch, and you will close that opening up. I like to use a thread that matches. Since I left that extra seam allowance and I didn't trim it, that means I don't have to worry about it being too short. There's plenty of extra fabric in there. Here's one that's finished. See how close the stitching is to the edge? Pop that back into your bag. You can use your fingers 
to get everything down into the corners so that your lining matches up with your outer pouch. Take it over to the iron and give it a nice little press. I just make sure that everything is sitting nicely in there so I don't have any wrinkles from the lining. It's really easy to put your hand in there, just make sure everything goes nice. You can use your corner tools. Whichever one you happen to use. A little bit of a steamy press and you're all set to go. After you make a couple of these, you'll find that they are super quick and easy to make. They take only about 15 or 20 minutes to make one. And they're great for assembly line if you're making a bunch for gifts or to sell at a craft fair. So there you go, quick and easy zipper pouch great for coins. Make them for your kids to take to school to put their little ID card in or their lunch money. You can also use them if you're a knitter or a crocheter to put some of your little notions in. If you're giving gift cards for Christmas this year or for other holidays and birthdays and whatnot, you can always make a little quick zipper coin pouch to go with it so they have something a little handmade and they can still have their gift card to go and purchase whatever it is that they might need or want. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it was short enough for those of you that just wanted a nice quick tutorial. Your code word for this week will be quick because this is a very quick tutorial for me at least and a very quick project to work on. So thanks for hanging out with me. Don't forget to check down below in the description box if you want to see the longer videos with all of the special tips and tricks that are great for beginners and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!